P.O., I'm starting today with the weather forecast. It will be bright and beautiful. Which brings us to the last P.O. positive or pet peeve of the year. Pick one from yours truly. Who'd like to end 1985 on a positive note? P.O. positive or pet peeve? We all know P.O. is the best place in the world. Related Christmas gift? Maybe. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Frank. Another satisfied customer, unless it's Bill's. There we go. Fancy handwriting on this one. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Thomas, it's good to see you. Thanks again for the little chat we had yesterday evening. Don't mention it, Maureen. I was glad to help. I think I've made the right decision. 
But I guess some situations don't have a perfect solution. You'll find out tonight, Thomas. We'll have a grand old time regardless. Oh, hey, Thomas. We're about to do a little interview, but you're welcome to listen in. Mr. Price, you know Thomas Weiss, don't you? Sure do. You're resident mailman, am I right? Good to see you, man. Hi, guys. Uh, don't mind me. I'll just be a fly on the wall here. That was Open Sky by Velvet Moon, one of my favorites. Folks, we have a special treat for you today, because I have a guest here at the Reynolds studio. You know that happens from time to time, but today it's a bona fide big shot. None other than KNW6's own newsman extraordinaire, Mr. Connor Price. Thanks for having me, Jack. Always nice to talk to a fellow broadcaster. So, how long have you been doing this local show? Coming up on our 10th anniversary, Mr. Price. But you've been at KNW6 for longer than that, no? Yeah, yeah, it's been... Gosh, <laughs> can you believe I started there way back in 66? As a segment producer on Portland Rise and Shine. Still remember the title of my first item, too. Is Poplin still poppin'? <laughs> That's a great title. And yet, this is the first time you've come to Providence Oaks. Uh, first time staying a while, at any rate. Uh, so, Mr. Reynolds, how would you describe this town? Hmm, well, I'd say it's... Hey, 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 wait a minute. Who's interviewing who here? I'll ask the questions, thank you very much. <laughs> Apologies, my friend. Just can't help myself always chasing the story, me. It's the commitment I've made to our viewers. The price guarantee. So, what stories are you chasing here in P.O.? Oh, you know, just trying to capture the old couleur locale. I must say, the people here are very friendly. And I hope the feeling's mutual. Right, Thomas? <laughs> That's Thomas the mailman over there. But never mind, he's not miked. Well, Mr. Price, we did get off to a rough start. Hmm, you don't say. Because we happen to have a little section called P.O. Positive or Pet P. You might have heard of it? Can't say I have, but I do like the alliteration. Hmm, well, Lucinda Boyle called in a pet peeve yesterday, saying you were quite rude to her when she asked you for an autograph. Uh, well, I'm sure that was a misunderstanding. Uh, see, I must have been on a really tight schedule, because otherwise I'd do anything for a fan. That's... The price guarantee, right? Sure. Anyway, we'll be back with Connor Price, KNW Six Star Reporter, right after this. What the hell, Jack? Ambushing me like that live on air? <laughs> Relax, just joshing you a little. But I'll let you plug the heck out of this Oregon Trail thing you're filming. How's that? We'll make sure everyone in town fully cooperates with your crew in the home stretch. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, speaking of the home stretch, 
I better get back to my job as a serious broadcaster. It's been real, pal. Can you believe this guy? Sheesh. Congratulations. You've just had the privilege of the full Jack Reynolds experience. Huh. That's the thanks I get for stopping by amateur hour. Ha! <laughs> uh, sorry you had to witness that, Thomas. Made for good radio, though. While it lasted, anyway. I'll see you at most tonight, yeah? You don't want to miss what Frank's been cooking up. Can't wait. See you there. Part and parcel. <laughs> knock, knock. Hmm, he's not in. I should probably leave it with Ilsa, then. Room... nine. Knock, knock. Hi, Thomas. Oh, is that Gabriel's tux? Signed, sealed, delivered. That's the Weiss guarantee. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Thanks. Uh, right then, I'll... I'm feeling fine, I'm feeling strong. It won't take long. Ooh, when I do a smile, get crap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When I do my witchcraft, ooh, 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 yeah. Well, great. So, <laughs> <laughs> see you tonight at the diner. Oh, and thank you. My pleasure, Ilsa.
Hi, Meredith. It's the Weiss family again. We wanted to wish you a happy new year before we're going to Moe's. Hey, thanks. We've got a little over an hour left here before it's 1986. You'll watch out for those fireworks, won't you? They're so unpredictable. I will. I'll probably stay inside anyways. We've got four more hours to go, but happy new year! <laughs> I'd rather be early than late. Uh, are you going anywhere to celebrate? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We're all a bit drained after making the deadline. Some guys from the office were going to do a Yi'ar Kung Fu tournament, but I didn't feel like it. A Kung Fu tournament? On New Year's Eve? <laughs> yes, Mom. It's a video game. But Tess and I are going to watch Trading Places instead at my place. I think that New Year's Eve is overrated anyway. People seem to think it must be the best night of the year, but all you usually get is a lot of drama and a solid hangover. My New Year's resolution was not to make a big deal out of New Year's Eve anymore, and it looks like I'm not going to break it. <laughs> but uh, don't let that ruin your evening. I totally understand you, Meredith. My best New Year's Eve was actually one I spent all by myself. I don't know why, but that night... I've never felt more at peace. And most parties aren't worth the hangover, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's because you usually forget half of what happened. <laughs> Sorry, Meredith. Your father's memory needs a little grease between the hinges. <laughs> like starting the car in time before going to Moe's? <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> okay, guys, I won't hold you up. Have a great evening, and a happy new year. Love you. My beautiful people, may I have your attention for half a minute? First of all, welcome to Moe's. We're excited to celebrate the last few moments of 1985 together with you. It was quite an undertaking to host this New Year's Eve party at the last minute. So if you feel like the snack situation isn't up to standard, you're right. But we do have enough tater tots, french fries, potato wedges, and potato pancakes to feed the entire village. Thank you so much for that, Jack. And thank you all for coming. Cheers to a great evening. Well, if it isn't my favorite KNW6 news team. In the flesh. Hi, Thomas. Looking like a genuine love story, you two. Seems like you're headed towards a very happy 1986. Yep, and a happy 1987, hopefully. 1988, maybe? 89, 90, 91, happily ever after? Until we discover I'm terminally ill and die in your arms. Elsa, that's horrible. It's also the plot of love story, you big doofus. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Champagne for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends. Hi, Connor. So, is the segment on Providence Oaks in the can yet? Almost, my friend. Still have to shoot the countdown to the new year. Hopefully that gives us the ending we need. I've been promised a spectacle. Easy on the alcohol there, Connor. We still need you on camera. Can't have you slurring your words. Slurring my words? Whatever do you mean, Ilsa? Quit fooling, you guys. It's getting close to midnight. Let's set up and get ready. Showtime. Okay, getting into character. See you on the flip side, mailman. Hi, honey. Ugh, there goes that Connor Price. Would you believe the motel had to custom order a blow dryer just for him? He tipped generously, though. Oh, is that Beth sitting over there? Let's join her. Good evening, my dearest of friends. Almost time for Old Lang Syne, eh? Did you know that Old Lang Syne was written down by Robert Burns in the 18th century? And that he based it on an old Scottish folk song? He wrote it to a different melody than the one we sing today, but... I have to say, I do like this version. And 
It's often sung after a special dinner where haggis is served. Would you believe? Honestly, Beth, I don't know how we'll get by without these fascinating facts when you're gone. Well, I will still be selling sets of encyclopedias at the store for a few more months if you need them. I'll cut you a nice deal. <laughs> Only if you'll help load them into my truck. All joking aside, my friends, now that a new year is upon us, I feel a moment of thanks is in place. I know I've kept my situation from you for a while, but... Now that it's out in the open, I honestly don't know why I didn't share it with you sooner. Pride, I suppose. But I feel so much better now. So thank you, my friends. That's what we're here for. Glad we could be there for you, Beth. And thank you for opening us to it. We'll always be there for you. But you have to let us in first. I hope you'll remember that when you're in Georgia. Definitely. In fact, it's my new resolution for 1986. Along with letting go and seeing where life takes me. What about you, Emily? Any resolutions? Well, less work and more fun, I suppose. Now that this guy Matt is joining the motel, I am looking forward to a bit more quality time. What about you, honey? I'd like to head out to Meredith next year. Yes, we should. It would be great to see her again. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Well, whatever the future brings, this old acquaintance here will be hard-pressed to ever forget you two. Same here, Beth. Absolutely. We wouldn't be able to forget you if we tried. Not that we tried, of course. And like you said at Christmas dinner, even if the reasons for change are sometimes out of our hands, let's focus on the new beginnings that come along with them. Hmm? And what better time for new beginnings than New Year's Eve? Attention, folks! It's showtime! If you want to see the biggest fireworks show west of the Rocky Mountains, you better be standing outside in about ten minutes. That's my cue. From a little spark may burst a flame, as Dante once put it. But I need to visit the ladies' room first, or I'll turn into a pumpkin. See you outside. <laughs> Isn't she marvelous? I'm so happy for her, but I am going to miss Bethany. So will I. Seeing a parcel addressed to the bookstore always brightened my mood. Hmm. It makes me feel a bit melancholic. Even more than I usually am on New Year's Eve. This odd feeling of looking back and forward at the same time, and... Now I'm doing that over a much longer period than just the coming and going of the year. I know what you mean. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like to take my time and reminisce about all the things that happened. Oh, yes. We should appreciate what we have a bit more. And don't just let life pass us by without noticing. So let's enjoy the here and now. Our wise and beautiful daughter just taught us not to demand that this should be the best evening of the year. But we're allowed to try it, right? So this is where my speech ends, my dear husband. And now I need a glass of champagne. I'll drink to that, uh, and to you, and all the good things the new year will bring us. Maureen, I need champagne. For me, and my beautiful wife. You got it, sir. Just grab your glasses and join me in the bottle outside. It's less than a minute now. Twenty seconds on go, Mr. Price. Go. And so, 1985 draws to a close.
With mere seconds left in the year, I've been told this little lake town will strive to end 85 with a bang. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Holy Toledo! Ilsa, are we getting this? Sure sounds like a delicious eggnog recipe. Hurry up, dear. It's coming up next. Yes, yes, don't get too excited now. It's just a preview, remember? And now, a man with a very special New Year's resolution. And he's going to tell us all about it. Isn't that right, Sybil? Absolutely, Bob. It's none other than our roving reporter, Connor Price. Connor, my dear, where in blazes are you? Well, Sybil, I'm in beautiful Providence Oaks, wishing you and Bob and our viewers a joyful 1986. And as for my New Year's resolution, Bob, why, it's my very special price guarantee to all of you that I will be sharing gripping tales and intimate portraits from all over Oregon in an all-new series of special reports on small-town America. Part one will air tonight at eight, right here on KNW6. And it will be all about the gorgeous little lake town where I was fortunate enough to spend the waning days of 1985. Here, let's take a look at an exclusive sneak peek. Providence Oaks, an idyllic town by a lake just south of Melville. It's where this reporter counted down to 1986. And although, unfortunately, the fireworks started a little early, so we didn't quite manage to catch them on tape, and take it from me, it was quite the spectacle, courtesy of postal worker Frank Coleman. Just a faulty batch of leftover 4th of July material, I guess. Not mine, anyway. No siree. But I'm all right, folks. Really, everyone can stop calling me at home. I'm A-OK. -okay. And perhaps that encapsulates the true nature of Providence Oaks, or P.O., as it's called by those who know and love it. It's a town where, even when things don't go as planned, folks will be all right and A-OK. -okay. It's just, you know, we help each other out, and there's nothing we can't fix. A town where first impressions can be deceiving. This town may look sleepy from the outside, but trust me, there's always so much stuff to do and take care of. Ugh. A town where generations have grown up. It's a great place to raise kids and also a, a great place to um, have been raised as a kid. Uh, myself, I mean. <laughs> Back when I was a kid, being raised here... <laughs> Uh, was that okay? A town where patience is still a virtue. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is where I'll find what I'm looking for. But I do know I can keep looking here for as long as I want. And that feels great. A town full of unique individuals that, deep down, have more in common than you'd think. The average Providence Oakian? Probably doesn't exist. We do tend to keep to ourselves until someone needs us. Then we show up. Always. A town you can't help but love. You know, I just think it's the best place in the whole wide world. <sighs> Sue me. And where everyone has a story to tell. To me, it's all about the people, because... Yes, well, leave it to the mailman to say it best. This is home. Indeed. 
Providence Oaks, like so many other places in our great state of Oregon, is a small town with a big heart. This is Connor Price, KNW6PO.